Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm really excited. We're going to be developing a Super Mario Bros. AI using computer vision. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, this tutorial series, if you want to call it a tutorial series, is going to be a little bit different than my previous ones. In the past, I've sat down and coded everything line by line right with you guys on the screen. I don't know if that's boring or if that's fun to watch, so we're going to try something different. This time, I'm going to go ahead and code this project, and every time I hit a small milestone, I'm going to stop, I'm going to record it, I'm going to walk through it with you guys in detail on how to do it, and let you guys feel free to try to have fun and experiment on your own. Of course, the code will always be available for download from my GitHub, and I look forward to answering your questions or comments down below. And with that, if you enjoy what you're seeing, consider liking and subscribing. I would appreciate it. Okay guys, so the current uh, setup that I have is I have my Super Mario uh, emulator on the top right hand corner here. You can see where my target mouse is here. Um, I've got Super Mario up in that corner. Um, it could be anywhere. I just put it up there for convenience and I've used, uh, I'm using Linux. I'm able to pin that to the top of the desktop. You may or may not, that doesn't matter. The point is I just got that pinned in the corner. And let's run the code in its current state and let's talk about what we're going to actually produce with our, with our current program. So the program has two windows which, which I'm going to discuss right now. The first one is the uh, computer vision preview window and you can see that it looks like the game window and it's able to identify a few different objects like Mario and the mushroom. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new game here and you can see how Mario, his character is highlighted with a blue circle. It says Mario. If I start running here, it's going to follow Mario on the screen. So it's able to track Mario's position. And when I pop out this mushroom, it's green. So that's a good item. Uh, it says mushroom. Mario gets it. Now you'll notice that a lot of things like bricks and big Mario are not currently highlighted. Those have impl been implemented. I've just implemented small Mario and the green mushroom at this time. Uh, this is just kind of a proof of concept. So this first step is we're able to capture our, our game window. We're, at, we're able to preview it if we would like to. <clears throat> and we're able to start identifying objects on the screen. So we're currently identifying Mario and a mushroom. And we can use the methods that I use to capture those two to capture other objects, which is something that I'm going to go ahead and do. Uh, probably before the next video like blocks and pipes and things like that and uh, But that's the first kind of milestone is that we're able to capture our window We're actually we're able to preview it and identify objects now the second window is a really weird looking window and um, If I move around you'll see that it, it looks like this now. This is not something that's meant to be um, displayed normally or provided to the player or anything like that or you know to the uh, uh, you know, to the viewer, not the player. I guess the AI is playing, is going to be playing our game. Now this looks really weird. This is not an image, actually. This is actually just a visual representation of a um, a type of data, um, and what that data is is called a match template. So I'm going to explain what a match template is in a little bit more detail. But essentially, the AI this is the match template preview window, if you want to think of it as that for the mushroom. So this is actually just for the mushroom. And, and the items that are highlighted in white on the screen are things that are closer to a mushroom. And the things that are black, like the background is solid black, those are things that are less like a mushroom. Now that's kind of a weird concept to say something is more or less like a mushroom. But what I really mean is the, the AI is able to identify like what is an object and what is not an object. So obviously things that are objects like these blocks, that's more likely to be a mushroom than you know just nothing like empty background space so that's why there's a little bit of a, a brightness there but of course um, they're not really the mushrooms and the game doesn't identify them as mushrooms uh, it just is able to identify it's kind of like a uh, a probability from zero to one or you know zero to hundred percent how likely is it that this thing matches the other thing and if it's a mushroom you're gonna get a perfect match or close to a perfect match but if it's something that looks similar to a mushroom from a pixel perspective, you're going to get something in between. And that's what we're seeing here is this preview. We're seeing all the things that the computer is looking at and comparing to our mushroom template. So I just wanted to give you this preview. So these are the two things that I've implemented in order to get this code. So here's Mario. 
uh, again, you can see Mario has the blue circle around him with the name Mario next to him. And the way the computer is able to find Mario on the screen is using this match template, a similar one to this. Now this one is dark because Mario doesn't look like a mushroom, but if we were looking at the match template screen for Mario, we would see a very, very bright, bright Mario spot there because Mario exactly matches Mario. So that's the current state of the project, pretty cool. Now let's look at the code and how you can implement this. Okay, so I created a class called Mario AI, and this is gonna be the main AI you know, class that's gonna be the uh, thing that's actually performing our you know, AI logic. And I've currently implemented just a few functions, and they're pretty simple. So I have an init function, which is our constructor, and I'll explain what this does, but essentially all it does is loads in all of our templates. And I know you don't know what a template is yet, but we're gonna look at that. But essentially it's just gonna find all the templates that I give it from a template file. We'll explain that in a minute. That's pretty much all that that does, is it just sets it up with some default values. So we're gonna have some default values here, and it loads in all of our templates. Uh, and then the next uh, function that I have here is called set screen corners. And this is just a very simple function. It's gonna hold um, some values here. So the self dot top left, bottom right, those are two um, variables that are stored in this class. And essentially that's just gonna tell the AI where on the screen is the game. So you may use a different monitor rev resolution or a different size. Basically, I just wanna tell the, the, the game when we start, here's the top left hand corner, here's the bottom right hand corner, that's where I want you to look at for the game. So if I move it to a different monitor, to a different size or, or resolution or scale, that would just be set appropriately. Uh, so that's all that that does. Uh, and then, so, th so this first part here is pretty basic stuff. So now we get into the uh, first interesting part of today's um, code. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna minimize the uh, Mario window here so you can see this, this code a little bit better, guys. What the, uh, the first important function we have here is what I call start screen capture. And essentially this is the function that is gonna start our loop, that's gonna start capturing our screen and displaying it, uh, not just for display purposes, but also for computation purposes. And if you've seen my other videos, I'm doing that with the MSS library. The MSS library I found is really nice for cross-functional, cross-platform uh, screen capture, and it's fast. It's, it can be extremely fast. So to do that, you're gonna to need to make sure you install the MSS library which, with, using pip install MSS, and you're gonna to need uh, to make sure you import that into your project. So essentially what we're doing is we're instantiating a uh, MSS object, which is our screen capturing object, and then I'm setting an infinite loop while true, and I'm using that object to grab a screenshot, and this is where those coordinates come in. So it's gonna grab the pixels from the top left with and you can't see it, but I'll, I'll go to the end of the line here. It's basically just the um, height, the width and the height. So essentially this screen capture grab takes the, uh, you know, the corners of that object and it returns those pixels. Um, then uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, we're gonna be using NumPy and OpenCV. So OpenCV is a image processing library in Python and NumPy is a numerical um, and compu a highly efficient computational package uh, for math and um, computation. It's excellent. We're going to be we're going to be using these two libraries. These are going to be our bread and butter libraries for a lot of our processing. And all I'm doing is I'm taking that image that came back in uh, that was stored in memory and I'm converting this into a NumPy array. And the reason I'm doing that is OpenCV works with images um, and the data format of those images is a NumPy array, essentially. So if we have a piece of data in the format of a NumPy array, we can manipulate that as an image in OpenCV. Uh, I'm, I'm creating a copy of that image as a grayscale image. So a lot of our computations will be done using grayscale and not the color. We're gonna use the color for preview, you know, for fun. Uh, but essentially, a lot of the, the faster computation we can do in grayscale, um, that's going to make it easier and simpler and hopefully speed up our code. And um, the self.find templates, this is just a kind of placeholder function where I'm going to be uh, talking about template matching in a moment. Um, and then after, so after we capture our images, 
and we have them in the format of a NumPy array. So we have an image and a gray, a gray version. So we're actually storing two images in our object. Um, every time this thing loops, we're gonna be overwriting the previous one. So we're gonna always be keeping a fresh copy every iteration of this loop. And we're gonna use OpenCV to preview that. So that's the start screen capture function. You can take a look at that and implement that in your project. So now let's talk about uh, template matching. So let me actually show you what a template looks like first. So I'm gonna to go to my project folder here and I created a folder called assets templates. So this is um, for my project. So let's just look at the uh, mushroom image first. So essentially the mushroom template is a series of pixels that are unique enough that I'll be able to find those reliably in the game. If you think about it, uh, a lot of these objects are not square and we need to have a matrix of data. And one of the challenges is the background color is not going to be constant between levels. So if you think of an object as let's say round or not, or, you know, not square, it's a lot easier if we can chop out a square portion of that object and use that as our template. So instead of using the whole mushroom, I'm using the square rectangle that's basically chopped out of the center. And that's my template. And you can see I kind of did the same thing for Mario. So Mario, you can imagine I chopped a rectangle right out of the middle of Mario. So that way I don't have to worry about his arms and legs dangling in front of different objects like that green mountain or uh, the blue hill in the back, you know, the blue sky in the background, which, which can make it more challenging. I have a nice frame of reference that's going to be, that's going to be constant regardless of the objects in the background or around Mario. And essentially what template matching is going to do is it's going to take this template and it's going to scan all across this image. So you can see my cursor here, it's going to scan and it's going to eventually find, okay, here's the one that matches the best. That's where Mario is. So here I am down in the code and you can see what I'm doing is I'm providing OpenCV with a match template. I'm providing it with the grayscale image of the whole screen. That's the image that's stored in memory uh, through, our, through that loop that we just talked about. And then I'm providing it with a template. So I have a function here that essentially loads all these templates in. You can see this, uh, this is where it go, we go back to this initialization. And if I go down to templates.py, you can see that these are basically names and uh, file locations that I wanna load into memory. And that's what happens initially. So for example, all these templates of Mario get loaded into memory. This template of a mushroom gets loaded into memory. Each of these templates is gonna go through a match template function in OpenCV. That's the template here. So in this case, we're, we're matching the mushroom template to the whole image. And we're coming back with a normalized coefficient. And it, like that's just what I just explained, that black and white. Black means, black you can think of as 0% match, means it has nothing in common with the object and a 1.0 or a one, would be like a 100% match. It would mean that every pixel exactly matched the pixel in the template. And of course, if you, had, if you were off by, let's say just a little bit, like all the pixels had shifted over just a hair, that match template would return something in the middle. It wouldn't be a 100% match, but it would still be a high match. So what we can do is after we get this match um, object, we can use another function called CV2 min match location. And CV2 min match location actually returns four things. It returns a minimum and maximum value in, a, in the location in the array of that minimum and maximum uh, object. So in our case, we wanna find things that are the best match. Now there could be situations where you wanna find the worst match. Uh, maybe you wanna find the only spot on the screen that's not green or something like that. Um, you could use minimum value for that. But in our case, we're gonna use the maximum value and what we're gonna say is if the maximum value is bigger than 85%, uh, and I just kind of arbitrarily um, chose this just for testing purposes, and it seems to be working pretty well. Um, whatever matches greater than 85%, then that's Mario. So go ahead and uh, draw a circle and put the text, or sorry, in this case, it's the mushroom. So go ahead and draw a circle, put the text that it's a mushroom, and then these parameters here just tell it, you know, how to put that circle in text, what's the radius, what's the color, that kind of stuff. So you can look at OpenCV's 
library for circle and put text. This is very simple stuff. Uh, just put this mushroom text on this image, do it at this location. I offset it just a little bit. You know, what font, what color, that kind of stuff. Very simple. And now that we have this max location, we know the location of Mario on the screen. Let's go back and look at our code again here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this again now that you have a little bit better understanding. So again, we're capturing our screen and displaying that to, the, uh, to us, I guess. But this is our a match template. And this here is a percentage. So when it finds a match, it gives you that um, number. So you can see in our case that it's finding, you know, I think this is Mario. Uh, so you can see most of the time it's a very high match occasionally. So there's probably a few frames. Maybe I'm missing one of the frames in his running, uh, you know, his running animation. I got to look at that. But essentially, most of the time you can see that we're getting a pretty high match and we know his exact location is always 77 566. that of course it makes sense he's about 77 pixels to the right and 700 or so pixels down so that's exactly where mario is on the screen and as he moves around you can see that you know we get his updated location and again looking at our match template you can see in real time where the match template is. So let's take a look and see when that mushroom pops out, how does it look? It's hard to see, but there's an extremely bright spot there that corresponds to the best match on the screen. That must be a mushroom. So that's how we're calculating that. So this is the first step. So you can go ahead and start uh, implementing this. Feel free to pull my code, guys. Um, let me know the comments that you have, the questions that you have. I'd be glad to answer them and help you get started with this project. And I look forward to seeing you in the next update video.